again my friends and welcome back to my channel and to look at this beautiful box that I recently uh, bought uh, if you don't know a few well by now it's a few months back uh, but I turned 30 at that point but because of the pandemic and everything uh, my family couldn't come and visit me for my birthday so they sent me a bunch of money instead and for that money I bought this beautiful box and this is the Flash Gordon role-playing game uh, collector's box set uh, produced by uh, Pinnacle Entertainment for the Savage Worlds uh, role-playing system uh, now I would like to preface this that this is not a review <laughs> of the role-playing game I have not played this I have just gotten it <laughs> and sort of opened it up and, uh, and just had a quick look at it so I, I can't pass any judgment on the role-playing game itself um, and I'm really only vaguely familiar with the Savage Worlds system so this is not a review this is just look at the box because I really like it and I want to show it <laughs> so uh, that is that um, now my connection to Flash Gordon is that Flash Gordon is um, like a world and a character that I really like and I, I sort of I'm attracted to that sort of retro pulp um, kind of feeling about it um, I have watched the movie I have the movie here uh, I like it I uh, watched it several times by now um, so that is something I have uh, consumed when it comes to Flash Gordon I only have one comic collection and which is this one which I have not read <laughs> so you know I, I, I have really only a little um, experience with the Flash Gordon comics which most of this role-playing game is based on um, so you know I, I can't I can't really comment on how faithful the role-playing game is to the source material but I have watched reviews with the creators and essentially they've said that they have really uh, studied the source material and that they have taken um, ideas from all of it, including the movie. So uh, I, I think the role-playing game is, is well based on, on the source material. Uh, and the Flash Gordon role-playing game, as I said, is also using the Savage Worlds uh, role-playing game system, which is like a generic uh, RPG system used for, for several different settings, including this one. Um, I have one of the sort of core rule books for Savage Worlds. Um, this is not the latest edition, this is an earlier one. I think they've updated it slightly since this, since, since this one came out. Um, I have only flipped through this one like quick, quickly. So I, I, I'm, like I said, I'm really only vaguely familiar with how the Savage Worlds system works. Uh, but it is very popular, I've heard really good things about it, so I'm eager to try it out. Uh, for example, in the Flash Gordon setting. So then, for the box itself, um, my my copy here got, I don't know how well you can see, but it got a little bit dinged up here in the corners during shipping, uh, but that's fine. <laughs> it did have to ship all across the Atlantic <laughs> to me, so that is kind of to be expected, to be honest, um, especially now during the pandemic where everyone is sort of out of their game a little bit uh, <laughs> but the box itself it's sturdy it's really good quality cardboard uh, box um, it's it's not gonna fall apart anytime soon so let's open it up then it has a really lovely cover um, I think you can get a larger look uh, a larger um, or wider uh, look at this image later but it's 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 really great so then you open it up to the first parts of the collector's edition here um, this insert box here got a little bit damaged for me uh, not too much but a little bit um, however this part here is actually laying on a separate piece of <laughs> in insert box that is not connected to this and it looks great right now because I've sort of fixed it before recording uh, but it's actually not good at staying in place like you can quite easily just do like this <laughs> so I, I, I'm not quite sure I understand what the thought was behind this um, 
I have tried several different ways of putting it in here, sort of, to try and keep it in place, but it isn't working. So <laughs> I, I, I'm a little bit baffled there as to why that is as it is, but I digress. We have dice and we have, of course, bennies, which is a important part of the Savage Worlds uh, system. Uh, these came, of course, uh, factory sealed in plastic, and I've opened it and taken it out. And right now I'm just storing them temporarily in this standard plastic bag. I'm probably gonna get something like a nice dice bag or something for them later on. Um, however, I'm not... I assume they are supposed to be stored over here, but there's not a lot of space there. So if you put them in a dice bag, it's gonna take up even more space. So, oops, sorry. Uh, bumps the camera stand there, but you probably have to maybe store them inside here somewhere. I don't know. It's um, I, I have to think about that a little bit how, how to store them nicely And then we just take this out. This is also got a little bit damaged down here, but it's fine So then we're delving into the content. Well, let's first, before we move on to that, let's take a look at these things here. So the die. What a nice die. Standard set of die. Uh, dice. You see, we can take them out actually. Uh, red and yellow, which is suitable for Flash Gordon. That's sort of his, his colors. I don't know. Yeah, I think the camera is focusing there. This one has the Flash Gordon symbol on the one there. Uh, looks really nice. Um, you know, good set of dice. I have nothing to complain about regarding these ones. And then we have the bennies, which I believe in Savage Worlds uh, are used like um, fate points, kind of. Um, and it's kind of nice that they have this really tactile thing for, for fate points. So, on the back you just have the Flash Gordon logo, and then on the front you have several different uh, motifs of Flash Gordon characters. Really nice. Um, I don't know how well the camera is picking this up, but they're kind of a little bit shiny. They're not quite sparkly, but they have a really nice, um, slightly reflective surface there that is, is really nice. And, and they feel good quality, so I like them. And then we have this box, which is two sets of playing cards. Uh, now, in the Savage World system, I believe that you use the playing cards um, as uh, initiative uh, deciders. Like you draw a playing card and you see where in the initiative queue, so to speak, that you end up. Um, also a really nice sort of tactile part of the game. Um, and it's nice that you know everyone on the table can see what what's, what your initiative is because you have the card in front of you, kind of. And some really really lovely artwork on these. I mean, they they look absolutely great. Um, I'm definitely going to be using these when I play Flash Gordon game because they look gorgeous. All original artwork from the comics, I believe. I mean, don't quote me on it, but <laughs> that is. Uh, the impression that I've gotten that a lot of this artwork is original. So yeah, those are the playing cards. Like I said, there, there are two sets of these, uh, in case you need two sets. And now for the box itself. So we have a ton of bonus material in here that you don't get if you <laughs> don't pick up this uh, collector's edition. Uh, so first of all, we have a few bookmarks here. Let's take them out. Some really, really lovely artwork here. Um, I believe these are the same figures that are on the Bennies, or at least some of them are. Uh, really, really nice. I wouldn't say they are the best um, bookmarks I've ever come across. I mean, for example, here's another one. Um, this is like your regular freebie bookmark that you pick up <laughs> on places. I think I pick up, picked up this one. On the World Science Fiction Convention in Dublin. Possibly it was in Helsinki when the Worldcon was in Helsinki, but I don't remember. Anyway, this is like your standard freebie bookmark. And this one is 
sturdier than what is in uh, the Flash Gordon sets. Like it's it's just slightly thicker. I don't know how well you can see that, but but this one is sturdier. So I'm I don't think I would actually use these as actual bookmarks. Um, I prefer my bookmarks a little bit sturdier than this, but they do look great. So you know, as a sort of collector's item, I think they're great. And then we have these ones, uh, which are so-called um, cliffhanger cards. Now I don't know exactly how these are used in the game, uh, but I assume they are, <laughs> as the name suggests, sort of a way to figure out cliffhangers, if that's something you would like. So for example, on the first one here, you have a new path opens to somewhere. The current opposition is left behind, but all new adventures and dangers await. You know. I, I don't know uh, how well these will play out when, when you're using them in-game. Um, I will reserve judgment on that. I'm not quite convinced um, that they will be something that I personally use, but I don't know. That remains to be seen. I, I like the concept of them, so I'm, I'm definitely going to try them out and see how they work. And then we have a ton of stuff here. So first off, we have a couple of like fake propaganda posters. Um, these are these are neat. They they they, they look nice. Um, I would probably say these are my my least favorite part of the collector's set because they are not actually useful. They're just sort of flavor, um, which there's nothing wrong with that. But I mean, what do I do with these? I don't think I want to put them on my wall, so, eh, you know, they're, they're fine, they're fine. I have nothing really to complain about, except that, you know, they're not really useful in-game, but that that's fine. Uh, and then we have this, which I believe is a quick reference sheet, um, at least that, that's my impression of it. It uh, has some of the rules that you can quickly look up. If you don't want to browse through the book, you can just have a check here. And then we have a map. This is a fold-up map, not a not a huge one. It's only like two pages, um, but it, it it looks nice. It's clear. It's easy to read. You know, you understand what's going on here, and uh, yeah, nothing to complain about here either. I like this one. And then you have what are they call archetypes, which I believe are maybe finished, like ready to play characters. Uh, they are at least example characters that you can play in the game for the, the uh, different uh, races or species that you can play as. Um, I really like the artwork on some of them, like this one. This is one of my favorites. Um, so if I were to pick one to play, I would probably pick her. She's really cool. I like her. Um, so yeah, there are a bunch of these for those that uh, want to use them. I, I'm not sure if my group, when I get around to playing this, will use them, but uh, they're nice. They're nice to have and it's a little bit extra artwork and I never say no to extra artwork because I like art. <laughs> um, and then we have two packages of combat maps. Now let's leave a little bit of room here so I can show you. I'm 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 on the fence about these ones. Um, not the maps themselves necessarily, but the material that they're made of. Let me just fold this out. So you have two sides. You have this sort of treehouse thing and two combat rockets here that you can have your ship fights on. Um, I don't actually have a lot of space here on the table but you can kind of see if you put them down here they're hard to flatten out. Um, the material here is sort of it's not quite cardboard but it's also not your, your regular thin paper it's half sturdy um, <laughs> I don't know. I, I'm 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 on the fence here. I think I would pref have preferred it if 
these were more like the quality of, of the kind of player board you would get in like a board game um, because that would be really sturdy and easy to lay out flat on the table. Um, that would of course make this whole box set more expensive, more expensive to produce and, and probably more expensive to buy uh, and also make the box heavier. Um, but I think I would maybe I prefer that or just do like this. This is the expanse map that I have and this is just done on on thin paper. Not quite as sturdy, not quite as durable. It does run the risk of being like ripped. Uh, but this one is easier to flatten out and put on the table flat. Um, which these maps are not quite. Not quite. I mean, yeah, right now I have the box in, in, in the background, so it's not quite laying flat on the table right now, but you can kind of see that they're living their own lives, these maps. <laughs> but they look nice. Like, I like the artwork on them, I like the concepts of the different um, um, areas, the different environments. You have a second one here, which is Coralia. Cor Coralia, I'm not sure how you pronounce that. And this one was called Fast Pursuit Rockets. So let's have a look at this one as well. Here you have some like underwater environment. Looks really nice, really colorful. And then you also have like two. Uh, spaceships on here that you can play on. This one has, for one place here, has like a crease here. Um, I'm not quite sure how that happened. Um, at first I thought that, well, it got dinged up in the packaging, but if that was the case, then the rest here would have a crease as well, and it doesn't. Um, so then I thought, well, maybe it was just a problem when they folded the map, but I don't know. It feels more like a production fault rather than a storage fault, you know, if, if you know what I mean, but I don't know, I don't know. It's still gonna function as a map, it just looks a little bit ugly, just that part. <laughs> but now we are getting to the meaty part here. The books, the rules, the settings, everything before this has just been flavor. <laughs> So, um, first off here we have the Game Master screen. It's not the biggest Game Master screen. It's kind of on the smaller side, but it's functional. Like if you compare this to, for example, the Expanse role-playing game screen, you can see that it is slightly smaller. But that's fine. And on here you will also have on the background the same piece of art that is on the box cover, only spread out a little bit more and um, wider. This is really nice. Like I, I love, I love this artwork, sp specifically this part. Oh, this this tickles the imagination. I think so. Really nice. Haven't like I said, haven't played the Savage World set system yet, so I don't quite know. You know, about the selection here on the game as a screen. Uh, you know, if if these are the rules that I want on the game, game as a screen. But I think, I think it's nice. I think it's probably going to be great when you use it. And with that, you have the journey to the center of Mongo. And this is an adventure. Uh, not going to flip through this much because spoilers. <laughs> but you can just sort of get a nice... You know, overview there on the table of contents. Um, really big lettering here, so it's really easy to read. And once again, you have artwork that I believe are from the comics, the original comics. So that is that. This one, I think I'm probably going to play through with my my group at some point. Um, we are currently in an expanse uh, campaign, so we're going to finish that first and then we will see what happens. And then we have two books, hardcover books, really nice, really sturdy. You have uh, The Kingdoms of Mongo, which is the setting book, and of course the role-playing game, which are like 
the core rules for the Flash Gordon um, role-playing game. Haven't read through these yet. Um, I'm going to. We have uh, here in the beginning we have like a foreword by the Flash Gordon himself from the movie, um, Sam J. Jones. And like I said, I believe they have taken material from all the Flash Gordon um, sources out there, which means including the movie, the comics, and also like there were earlier. I don't remember if this was a movie or a serial. I think it was a serial because it says 15 chapters, uh, but they have uh, looked at that as well. So uh, yeah, that is the book. And here you actually have a whole page of comics. You can read the comics in the rule book. <laughs> well, not quite. A little bit, but not, not all of it. Ah, yes. I am really, really excited to play this. Now, Flash Gordon as an IP, especially if you look at like the original comics, of course they some aspects of them hasn't maybe aged that well. Um, there were some some sexism and racism in the original uh, stories. Um, I believe that the authors or the creators of this game has really thought about that and taken that into account uh, and sort of tried to adapt those things for a more more modern uh, audience. Uh, or, or maybe in some cases even taking some of that parts parts out. Um, I, I did listen to an interview where they were sort of addressing that and saying, you know, well, that is part of Flash Gordon franchise, unfortunately. Um, but if you as a group are playing this, you sort of have to also decide on your own, you know, are you fine with you know, actually using, you know, Emperor Ming, even though he's sort of a stereotype there that's not made very good. Um, <laughs> and, and, and et cetera, et cetera, you know, you as a group, as a playing group, will have to, to sort of talk about that beforehand and decide on your own where you want to draw the line. Um, which I think is probably the best way to go about it, you know, to each, to each group their own. So yeah, that is the setting books. I'm also not going to flip through this too much. Um, but just to give you a little bit of a, an idea of, of what's in here. Like I said, lovely, lovely artwork. And um, just a lovely book overall. I'm really, really excited to delve into this. So that is the Flash Gordon role-playing game collector's edition. And now I have to have the joy of putting it all back together. <laughs> oh, also, uh, if you're curious about the size of these, they are bigger than the Savage World book that I showed previously. I'm just going to take it out again. So they're bigger than this one, but they are smaller than say for example a your your standard D, &D book so just just for reference there in case you were curious but like i said really good sturdy hardcover books so that's really nice um and that is all for me this time uh, i hope you liked the video i have not done quite a video like this before so <laughs> this is uh, a little bit of an experience, experiment here, but I, I like doing it and I hope you liked watching it. Um, if you did, leave a like, please. That would be really nice so that I know that you liked the video and uh, that I might do similar stuff in the future. Um, if you have played or if you want to play the Flesh Gordon role-playing game or the Savage Worlds system overall, uh, you're welcome to leave a comment down below. I would love to hear from you what your thoughts are. On, on the the system and the game setting and uh, until next time bye bye and happy role playing